whether you buy a $10 spanner or a $100 spanner, you're going to get paid the same hourly rate to use it. And the same goes for multimeters. In this video, we're going to have a look at a cheap multimeter off Amazon, go through its functions and see if it's worth buying. It's quite satisfying to buy a cheap tool and then find out it's just as good as a top brand one that's many times its price. This multimeter costs $21 off Amazon, that's Australian, and we're going to have a look at uh, how good it is and whether it's worth buying or not. I've always had good luck with cheap multimeters, I've always found that the leads, if anything, are what let you down, but the actual unit itself, they're pretty solid. So this is it straight out of the box, first time I opened it. It's got a warranty thing here you can scan and sign up to. I'm not going to worry about that for $21, I'm just going to take the risk. Unless it breaks straight away and then in that case I'm probably going to ask for a refund. It's got some leads here, they say CAT2 on the side, uh, pretty standard, just two prongs. Comes with some instructions, this is a manual range finding multimeter, not an auto range finding multimeter, so it might be handy if you don't know how to use them to have a look through the manual first. It calls itself a digital multimeter. I haven't seen an analog multimeter in a while. I don't think anyone's buying analog anymore. So you can test AC DC voltage, you can test uh, resistance, you can test uh, amperage draw up to 10 amps, you can test um, a diode tester and it's got a signal output they're mostly if you're going to be doing automotive stuff that's mostly all you need if it could measure Hertz that would have been a handy thing for me because on occasion I do need to measure a signal in Hertz it's made in China thank you China for making me cheap tools if it lasts as long as my Chinese chainsaw I'll be one happy bloke so you've got voltage AC which a diesel fitter or automotive mechanic would not be using. You've got amperage draw which you might want to use time from time. You've got a signal output, digital signal at 5 volts which I have no idea what I would use that for. This is the diode audible tester. Then we've got ohms, a selection of ohms and now we're into the DC voltage range and that's the entire range this multimeter does. It also has a backup light function which I think is pretty cool. Uh, not a lot of multimeters have that, especially on the cheap range. And of course the old hold. So once you get the reading you're looking for you can hold that with the hold button. The leads are pretty standard, um, there's not much to them. They're a Cat 2 rating like I said before. Uh, they fit nicely into the multimeter, they click in nice and they look feel like they've got a firm uh, connection. So we'll go try the multimeter out on a few things and see how it works. So this is a potentiometer on a machine. It's a 2000 ohm potentiometer, so it goes from 0 to 2000 ohms resistance. So we've um, screwed our multimeter in, we've plugged it in. And now we're just going to have a look at the reading. We've got 1400 there. Uh, just wind it up and down. It looks like this potentiometer might be going just over 2000 ohms resistance. It goes all the way down to zero. That's perfect. We'll go on the 20 kilo ohms and see if we can get just over 2000, which we do. So that's pretty accurate. I mean, it says 2000 ohms resistance on the back of this potentiometer, and this is reading just over 2000 ohms, which I think is probably pretty correct. I can't see how a diesel mechanic would ever use this function. It's a signal output of 5 volts digital, so not AC, but it acts like AC in a digital form. If you hook it up to a speaker that will run on 5 volts, the speaker will produce a tone, but I don't have one to show you. So now on to checking uh, DC voltage. Uh, checking with the polarity reverse just to see that it does pick up that I've reversed polarity so that means I've got the negative probe on the positive terminal of the battery and we've got negative 12.88 volts which is pretty correct I would say because this 
battery just come off the charger. Testing out the diode function, I don't have a diode to check but if you just put the probes together we should create a tone. Uh, which it does. Uh, you can use this to check continuity of wires, some people do. It'll, it'll let you know you've got a OK connection there but if you want to really see if you've got any resistance in your wires you wouldn't use a diode tester. 12 volt relay here. We're going to aim it out and check what type of current draw this relay should produce and then we'll check out our amp meter and see what current draw it, it comes up with. On the magnetic part of the relay that latches it, 86 and 85, we're going to check our ohms when I aim it out. Um, I, I know from experience that they're usually under 200 ohms, so I'm going to set it to the 200 ohm mark first and we'll see what it does. And we've got 78, 78, 79 ohms resistance. So if we type 79 ohms into our calculator at 12.88 volts, we get 163 amps. So that's how much current draw this relay should produce when it latches. And we're going to fact check that now. So we've got the multimeter hooked up to the relay. We'll put one probe on the positive pole and the other one on the negative pole. Uh, we can use that first port because we're under 200 milliamps. If we were going to have more current draw, we'd use the one that says 10 amps max. So that's too high of a reading. You can hear the relay latching though. So we're going to turn it down, turn it to the next one, turn it to a higher reading, and we've got 100 and 154 milliamp current draw and we, we calculated 163 so we'll be about 6% out. Um, that's not too bad I suppose. So now my electrician mate is hooking this up to the GPO, the wall power, to see how that works. We've got 240 volts which is what you will have in Australia at the wall and that's reading right on so that's pretty accurate. Not that a diesel fit is ever going to use that. So I'm pretty happy with this little multimeter. It was pretty cheap and um, it's going to do everything I need to do. I don't have to be super accurate with my multimeters. I'm not an electronics guy. Um, in the automotive world this is more than accurate enough to get a proper diagnosis. If you want to get one of these I'll leave a link in the description. It'll take you to the Amazon site where they are. If you want to see me do more videos on cheap tools, let us know in the comments and like and subscribe to my channel.